So that's something I made recently with Playground. It doesn't have a name yet, but it's something I had an awful lot of fun making. And it happened really, really quickly, which I should say is kind of the point of working with Playgrounds. What is Playgrounds? If you've not heard anything about it, it's what I humbly like to call the ultimate setup for Push. It's essentially a whole suite of instruments, sounds, effects, a setup that you could load once, you play with Push and you just go. It's it's really sports car. Usually when we're making music with with computers and with Push, there are so many rabbit holes to get lost in. There are so many opportunities to ask ourselves questions, open menus, start sample browsing, and just basically meander off whatever path it was that we wanted to be on in the first place. So Playground is an answer to that. And of course, everybody has got their own creative answer to these things. And this is mine. It might not be for you, it might not be for everyone, but that's why I want to give you a tour. And I thought that doing so, using something I made recently could be a nice entry point rather than just you know going through all the samples one by one or all the sounds which would take ages because there's thousands if you want to know more however you should check the website you should check the page and all information about playground check the free preview where there's lots more videos where you can see what's going on inside the playground guides playground challenges all these things i'm not going to talk about it now i'm going to talk about playgrounds so here we are playground what do we have here we have eight tracks in total, seven instrument tracks. So here we have the drum rack track, here we have the bass track, here we have the pads, leads, samples, two tracks which are called various VA. They can contain everything which is in these first five, these foundational tracks. And then PM is a special one, comes to that later. It's a lot of fun. I really like that, like, like that idea, but it's better to explain it when I'm uh, going through uh, everything else. So let's take a listen to what each track is doing just now. So here's DR, and I'm just going to solo this and I'm going to press play. So nothing too complicated, chunky bass, a little bit of effect. If we go to the next clip here, you can hear something a little bit more varied. You can hear some effects going on there. I don't know if you notice, but every pad has its own send and returns, and that is what makes DR such a big deal, as well as built-in FM, by the way, for every pad. And it's uh, DR. I mean, I, I can. I'm stumbling over myself. Let's talk about it. DR is is the drum rack, the one that I've talked about so many times as part of my live set, inspired by the rhythm, the electron rhythm, where I try to get as close as possible to that sort of sound and workflow. It's not. It's not supposed to sound exactly like it. It's just really inspired by it. And uh, a lot of you, a lot of you have written to ask me about this. And um, here we are. I finally, finally brought it all together in one place. Done a whole bunch of sound design to create all samples for it. And it's, it's ready, it's here to play with. Uh, I'll cir circle back to that and I'll just quickly try to keep going through the other things to uh, keep some sort of uh, tempo on this. So here's the, the bass track, let's listen to that. So you can hear it's quite a present low tone going on here, but also a bunch of space and slightly angry. It's an angry soup, let's say, of uh, effects going on around it. We can pull up the filter if we like. Pad one, it's all of that. It's quite subtle what's going on here. It's a long attack. These are all wavetable sounds. A few hundred of them. So just, you know, some, some well EQ'd, and I hope so, well EQ'd uh, stereo 
you know, pads that just sit relatively nicely in the mix, which is, again is the reason why we have these different channels with their own purpose and their own place within the mix. Um, so that we can have something which is very um, cohesive and that things don't get in each other's way. That said, there are ways in Playground to adjust it to taste, so also very important. So we come over to lead, there's a few things going on here. Bit of a gritty, angry lead coming out. Lead one is cool, I would say that, because it has a built-in portamento and glide to get that Blade Runner-esque kind of sound, which I so deeply, deeply, deeply love. Going through a few effects there, a few clicky effects. So yeah, lead one, and I keep on moving. If we come over to sampler one, there's actually no clip here, there's nothing actually being played. But if I play a note here, we can hear some of the samples on SR1. This is a Belgian train letting off some steam and leaving the station. There are some amazing old Belgian trains with just the craziest sounds in them. And that's part of a suite of um, samples you can play with in SR1 and, uh, and pitch and do all kinds of things too. I didn't use it in this, uh, in this idea or this track, however. Over on VA, uh, so VA for various, we have VA1. And VA1 uh, can do anything. I mean, it can do anything which DR, bass, pad, leads, and, and sampler can do. Uh, and it holds all of those. You can access any of them. What I added to this idea in this track was um, percussive sounds. It's most likely a tom sound from DR1. So just solo that and play that. This adds this kind of rhythm plus the effects. You might also hear that the reverb's being sidechained, which is something which is built in across the board, that the, the kick and the reverbs, they talk to each other in various different ways. Again, to make space, again, to keep, make things alive and, and organic and, you know, feel like they, they're, they're moving, as well as for the sake of the mix and keeping it clean. So that's that VA track on this one with something different going on. Sort of lost arpeggio. Where, just by example, I'm going to add some random notes here. One of my favorite features of ARP1, which you find in every track. Our next track is the uh, mysterious PM track, which stands for pre-master. And the trick with this track, which I really was so elated to find, is that it essentially allows us to automate all the parameters of the master track uh, in session view, which is something you cannot do uh, otherwise. And that's really good for creating fills, for creating um, momentary effects on certain scenes, for example and for building up uh, fill, uh, fills, rises, drops, these kind of things. I'll give an example. So usually, you know, what we would have if we want to put effects in the master, we're going to have to move between the master and these tracks. So you're doing something in the master, playing something here, and then you're like, ah, okay, I want to take the effects off the master, and you've got to go this roundabout way. This solves that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to record a clip into this track. So press record and pull up these effects quickly. And then close the recording. See that? Everything just hopped back to where it was, so the clip's gonna keep on moving through at the end. And it just moves back. So this is super powerful. You can make a clip for each scene, if you so wish, or set this up so that it's going to be accessible um, for just momentary effects. You, know, you could use this clip when you're playing something else later on in the track. So I find that very, 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 very powerful and very, very useful. Uh, and, uh, well, I had a lot of fun too. So that's uh, pre-master. Now some details we could go into just to pick out a few. 
over on DR1, we have a number of quite interesting things going on. One, one for example, is here's one of our kicks. We can choose the sound from 13. And turn the repeats off. So kind of 808 thing through different styles of kicks. And you can make them very, very long with decay and add some juicy, juicy, juicy drive. You might remember this from the monster video I made, uh, or you might not if you didn't see it. But what's really cool, really, really cool, in my opinion, is you can open up Kick, come here and you can add some FM, some frequency modulation to this pad or any other pad that you have. So let's just add some. You can choose the kind of waveform you're using. And add some white noise. So, so much space and room for sound design here. Uh, and that's part of the, yeah, the DNA of, of setting this, this, you know, mega drum rack up is that there would just be so much possibility for uh, automating those effects across uh, patterns, but also using step, uh, step automation to get that electron rhythm type um, workflow going. I'm not going to go through all of the pads, but maybe the tom could be nice just to pick out. Some FM going on here. Let's pitch it down. Add some drive. So you could use this, for example, uh, as your baseline. Now I think you're probably going to tell me that's an awful lot of reverb to put on something. And that brings me to a global parameter, which is the ability to change the effects on the built-in returns on DR1, which is over here. So Here's our send A select, send B select. Let's choose a different reverb. So this one's huge. Wait, I'm actually going to turn it up again so you can hear it. Let's choose a smaller one. Or even just turn it off. Or we can go really big. <laughs> now, you might say that's a little bit overboard for a drum rack. That's also the point here, so that it's really versatile. So what you could do is use some of the sounds to really punch through as your standard uh, percussion elements and use some of the others in a more subtle manner. So let's just, uh, let's just see what we can do here. Let's pull the filter back, the volume down. So you could have those kind of things going on in the backgrounds uh, while you know, while you have other things going on, like very, very dry kick coming through. You get the idea, you can mix and match here. So DR1, I could make a video um, of near infinite length on it. There's so much to talk about. Bass, bass one. So here we have, as you have with many of the instruments, essentially three instruments in one. And how this works is you can choose the bass instrument from zero, one, and two. Let's take some of these effects off so that it's not too, it's not influencing too much what we hear. Let's build up the, bring up the filter as well. Turn down the release, turn down saturation. So here is. Sound 76 on instrument zero. If we go up to instrument one, sound 76, we'll hear a kind of cousin of that sound. And if we go up to the next one, we'll hear the same sound with, but with some FM applied. You can hear this one is a little bit weedy in this case. And it always depends on just 
how the other parameters are sitting. If we go to a different sound, that's not weedy. Neither this one or this one. There is um, a, a volume, not volume neutral, but quite well controlled drive here, so it doesn't add a ridiculous amount of volume to what you're doing, of course in perceived volume, which is nice because often you find yourself adding drive and having to move around between that and the volume level to keep it um, relatively uh, balanced. saturation for some extra harmonics. A lot of bass sounds in there, a lot of things to explore. And what I would say about these bass sounds is that a lot of them are really set up to be useful bread and butter bass sounds. There's nothing too completely crazy in there. You get some very interesting ones with the FM uh, versions or varieties, but they're based essentially on sounds that can be fundamentally useful in a, in a, in a mix and kind of like go-to sounds. I think in the future, what I can do and explore is uh, add extra sounds to these um, perhaps as you know, packs or, or, or add-ons, so you can have even more wilder sounds if you, if you wish. But you can also go pretty, pretty wild with these, especially when we bring in some effects. Pad, let's keep moving here. We have a series of wavetable sounds. Let's turn the effects down a little bit. What I can do with the EQ here, which is already set up to do so, is I can remove the kind of channeling that it's built into to put it into a certain place in the mix to bring a little bit of the low end back. Although, the other reason we don't have so much low end here is because we have uh, AFX select one here, which I'm not going to go into too much detail, but if we pull this back, we can hear things in a bit more breadth. We can add some LFO. Next up we have lead. Uh, and here, yeah, a whole bunch of different lead sounds. I'm going to turn off the uh, glide. This might be a good point to point out that every single sound, except the, per the ones in drum racks, because that's not a feature the push has, are of polyphonic aftertouch. You can hear the filter and the pitch being modulated there. Let's pull these back a little bit. My um, enthusiastic uh, aftertouch brought down one of the lights, so I'm just going to pop that back on. <laughs> So yeah, lead is a lot of FM sounds. Let's 
turn off these effects. Hear it a bit more. Let's add a glide here. <laughs> it is a monophonic glide, so it does pull out some other notes. As before, uh, each instrument and each sound relates to the next, so essentially you have a family of sounds, so instrument 0 and its sound 73 is related uh, in its DNA to instrument 1, sound 73. And it's a little bit um, thought of along the lines of, okay, I have this sound, but I just want to hear a quick variation of it. So here, this one's actually much more subtle. This is going to sound beautiful in these effects here. Add some um, erosion. I could keep going, obviously. SR1, we have a whole bunch of uh, samples in there, um, including the, the, the train sounds. Also train sounds. And here you can go through a series of samples, some bells. What else do we have? That's uh, a whole bunch of New York police sirens sounding rather unhappy. That's in the New York Metro. And so on and so forth. A whole bunch of samples which essentially can start turning into instruments. Over on VA, we can basically choose between a whole bunch of sounds. So that each instrument represents one of these. So instrument one is DR1, instrument two is bass one, and so on and so forth. So that's bass. Here we've got the pads. Here we've got the leads. Here we've got some samples. There's our uh, happy sirens. So super useful for you know blazing through the rest of the sounds here. These are because we're on one, we're on DR1. These are the percussive sounds, which we can now turn into instruments. I mean, we can play them melodically much more easily. Exact same story here, and then we've got our pre-master, which I touched upon earlier. So a lot to talk about. This is a tour of the basics, you know, the, 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 the core fundamentals and foundation of how Playground is built and what you can find in there, or some notion of that. I, there's just not time to go through it all. Uh, what you can do is check out the free preview on the page for Playground, which is linked uh, below. And there you can hear more examples of each instrument, which are already already there, already re ready for you to listen to, and get a better idea of what's going on within Playground as an online course, within Playground as a space and, and community in which to share your, your music and, uh, and ideas. So that's been a tour of Playground. Thank you for joining me. Uh, do check the link in the description if you've not already onto the playground page. A lot more information there and uh, take care. <laughs>